Hell's Kitchen is all about revolutionizing the culinary industry. But did you know there are certain dishes that are banned from ever being made on the show? Well, this contestant decided to fool around a little bit and send one of them to the past. Ah, what could go wrong, right? The Hell's Kitchen Pantry offers its chefs a wide range of ingredients to help them whip up some next level dishes. But as a rule, anything potentially lethal is banned from use on the show. I mean, I sure hope so. Watching a contestant screw up chicken is one thing, but fugu? Count me out. But you'd be astonished to hear just how many times the health and safety standards were violated by contestants that have appeared on the show. Let's start with Brendan's second service in season nine. The trouble began when communication breakdowns between Brendan and Chino resulted in a screwed up risotto, not once, but twice. Chino reminds me of a chipmunk on meth. Creative, huh? But this little incident earned Brandon a not so flattering nickname the Prince of Lies. So what happened is, Brendan fired a sea bass for an upcoming table while the rest of the kitchen wasn't prepared. This mistake got Ramsey involved, who emphasized the need for clear communication and precision in timing during the service. Brendan was then instructed to prepare another sea bass to replace the one that had been sent in too early. Unfortunately, the situation took a turn for the worse when Ramsey grew suspicious of what Brendan was up to. Ramsey had a feeling Brendan had sent up the sea bass that had been cooked 10 minutes prior, which would have been in blatant violation of his commitment to freshness and quality. But Brendan vehemently denied it, claiming that he had started a fresh sea bass. Chef, I can't find it. However, Ramsey was still skeptical, prompting him to challenge Brendan to produce the old sea bass. Unbelievable. When he returned empty handed and admitted that he couldn't find it, Ramsey's tone grew deadly serious. He even went as far as threatening him to really drive the point home. Kitchen, I'm going to ask you one more time to tell me the truth. Is that the bass from 10 minutes ago, or is that a fresh one you've cooked? Because I'm going to turn this fucking kitchen upside down. Brendan's moment of truth came when Ramsey asked him for a second time whether or not the old sea bass had been sent out. And he finally admitted to the deception. Chef, yes. The admission came too little too late, with his brief lapse in honesty and integrity putting the reputation of Hell's Kitchen itself on the line. The only thing bigger than Brendan's ego are the lies that he tells, and I can't have that in Hell's Kitchen. Amen. Next up in season 14, Brett started the fourth night on the appetizer station alongside Brendan. When Brendan made a little slip up by serving too little risotto, Brett jumped into action and took over for him. The dude was willing to step up when things got tough, which despite what's coming up, I still gotta respect him for. I got this. While Brett was working on making a fresh batch of risotto, he thought he was nailing it. He felt pretty confident about the refire, but Ramsey spotted a big issue. Stop, come here, bring that Pan and bring that pan here. Still wondering what the real issue was? Well, let me illuminate that for ya. Three, four minutes ago, dumped into the fresh one. The chef what have in up. the fuck are we doing? You see, fresh is Ramsey's favorite F word. I know, I know, it's hard for me to believe too. And this next contestant decided to serve him just the opposite. In season three, Joanna had a crucial role at the appetizer station. It was her third and final service, and she was looking to take the lead with her risotto. But here's where things started to go wrong. Her first batch of risotto turned out way too salty. It's soft, it's salty, yes, and it's just, it's crap. This mistake forced the whole team to start over, which wasn't a good look for any of them, least of all Joanna. And the problems didn't stop there. When she sent up the refired order, it had to be redone for the third time because Bonnie's scallops were undercooked. And then, the biggest shocker of the night, Ramsey caught wind of something terrible. Smell that, hey you, don't you fucking dare, come here you, hello. Oh, God. And, well, I think you already have a fair idea of what happened. Can you not smell that? The crap is off, it's I shouldn't need to tell you how dangerous using spoiled ingredients can be, and Ramsey knew it all too well himself, since he didn't skip a beat before berating her. How can you do that? I didn't smell the crap. Ramsey looked genuinely terrified. 
But the bigger question is, what was a rotten crab doing in the kitchen in the first place? Anyway, Jen performed equally bad that night. She was initially assigned to the meat station, but when things got chaotic, Ramsey moved her and Julia to the appetizer station after Joanna's crab incident. Julia, yes, take chef. over. Yes, chef. The frustration was getting real, so Jen made the decision to throw away some cooked spaghetti that she thought wasn't needed. I mean, excellent judgment. But Ramsey suddenly called for spaghetti on the next order, and this caught Jen off guard. Guess what she did? When I decided to retrieve the spaghetti from the top of the garbage and washed it. 212 kills the bacteria, and then I decided to serve it. Yeah, your eyes aren't deceiving you. That actually happened. Thankfully, Julia stepped in and convinced her not to serve it because, well, of course she freaking shouldn't do that. It was in the garbage. Like, just think about that for a second. But I'm glad she had the rest of the contestants there to hold her accountable. If that had been her own restaurant, who knows what she would have gotten away with. Speaking of getting away with things, Barrett was in charge of the fish station for season 11's seventh service. And you won't believe what he did. You see, Barrett had experience cooking fish, so the night should have been a cakewalk for him, right? Well, turns out, Barrett sent out some halibut to the pass, meant for a group of elderly women. But there was something wrong with it. The paper. You got the parchment on it, man? What, you trying to kill people? By the time you swallow it, it's too late. You're on the floor with John Philippe doing CPR on you. Huh. Yeesh. Sometime later in the family dinner service, he was back at it again. First, when he sliced some lamb for an order, it ended up being undercooked. Barrett soon came up with a solution and put it back in the oven for an additional 30 seconds. Because of course that was going to fix it. Maybe I'm not searing it long enough. Maybe I'm not leaving it in the oven long enough. Maybe my oven temperature's too low. Whatever it is, I gotta figure it out and figure it out fast. Or maybe production sabotage you. If you watched my video on the dark truth of Hell's Kitchen, you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, go check it out right now and get caught up. Anyway, sabotage or not, instead of making sure the lamb was properly cooked, Barrett decided to send it out, despite knowing it was still raw. This was a significant mistake, because serving undercooked meat can be really dangerous. I mean, foodborne illnesses can be really bad. Barrett, if you knew it was raw, why'd you bring it up to me? I'm sorry, chef. Get it in the oven! Okay. Ramsey rightfully criticized him for the error. After receiving motivation from his teammates, Barrett made a second attempt, which was finally accepted. However, the black mark he got from this incident wasn't going to be forgotten so quickly. Then, things took another dangerous turn when Barrett presented his chicken dish. You can probably see where this is going. He was unsure if it was cooked properly, so he sought a second opinion from John. John told him that it wouldn't be accepted, plain and simple, which should have indicated to him that it was probably undercooked. Barry, are you serious? That shit shouldn't go in the window. No way in hell, man. Ramsey pushed Barrett to move faster while he put the chicken back in the oven. And while undercooked lamb is one thing, there's a reason people don't serve chicken medium rare like steak. Chicken is often loaded with a killer bacteria, salmonella throughout the meat, and it can only be neutralized by cooking it to the right temperature. Safe to say, he needed to fix the problem, and fast. Unfortunately, even with help from the red team, when Barrett sent out the chicken, it was still raw. And sadly, it was walking straight towards Sue Chef James's wife. Chef James's wife is pregnant. Oh my gosh. He put not only her, but also her unborn baby at risk. Raw fish, people can survive, undercooked meat, you can cook it more, like it's not gonna kill you. Fucking raw chicken will fucking kill you. But you know, this reminds me of what Brett did during his time on the show. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then make sure to watch my video on the 10 worst chefs on Hell's Kitchen. Trust me, it's a story you're not gonna wanna miss. So we just went over things that were raw and rotten. And it shouldn't come as a surprise, but you are absolutely banned from using pre-made, canned, or frozen food in Ramsey's kitchen. We're 22 seasons in, and you would think contestants would have figured this out by now, but it always keeps getting worse. Like this time in season 9. You open a can of pineapple, and you stick it on top of a chicken. Limited time today. Limited time. And I can't not mention the time Demir presented store-bought linguine in the latest season. 
I honestly wonder why chefs keep making this mistake time and time again, despite knowing how Ramsay feels about canned and frozen food. I don't know, maybe the next batch of Hell's Kitchen contestants need to keep an eye on my channel if they want to win the grand prize. Anyway, the 11 seasons that came before him should have been more than enough for Mike to understand it. But with all the preamble I've given it, you can probably guess what happened. When it was time for him to present his dish, Mike served tortellini with tomatoes. When Ramsay asked about the filling, Mike disclosed that it was cheese. And, well, there was more to it. It's a packaged tortellini, fresh tortellini. God, the secondhand embarrassment is real. This revelation alone would have raised eyebrows in any kitchen worth its salt, but the situation somehow took a turn for the worse, since Mike admitted that he used canned tomatoes for the sauce. Uh, they were canned tomatoes. So it's no wonder that Ramsay thought the whole thing was a joke being played at his expense. His whole meal came out of a box. Who does that? You know, you, you're cooking for Chef Ramsay. My thoughts exactly. But Mike's reaction to how Ramsay felt was equally telling. He was offended by the dramatic disposal of his dish. Because at least he hadn't served dog food, right? His words, not mine. What followed was a tense exchange between the two. Mike questioned Ramsay's judgment, prompting Ramsay to call him forward and demands that he repeat that to his face. But I think Mike realized that he was in way over his head since he had absolutely nothing to say for himself, which Ramsey loved. That's bullshit, bro. Come here. What did you just say? Come on, put your money where your mouth is, Mike. You got anything to say to me? Say it to my face, not my back. You got to shut fuck off. Anyway, while Mike chickened out, his canned tomatoes reminded me of Monique's Mo pasta. During the signature dish challenge in season 14, she was the last person from the red team to have her dish judged. When Ramsay asked her how she made the marinara sauce, she was completely honest, for better or worse. It's just from a jar. And guess what? She argued that Ramsay should have told her not to use pre-made sauce. But for that bit of back talk, and also the dish she served, she walked away with only one point. I don't think there's anything wrong with canned sauce. Unless you're from fucking Italy and you're like born as an Italian, you're not gonna be making your sauce from scratch all the time. Well, that attitude of hers also got her a whopping 14th place. Yeah, one of the first ones to go home to nobody's surprise. Up next, let's discuss Kevin's Chicken Caesar Piadina, a dish that drew Ramsay's attention for all the wrong reasons. Ramsay's initial disapproval stemmed from the very concept of the dish. He expressed his belief that a salad, which shines for being light and fresh, should not be perched on top of a pizza, which you'd want to be hearty and rich. This misalignment had already set the stage for a rocky evaluation, and its presentation really didn't do him any favors, since Ramsay noted that it was uneven as all hell, which left pretty much zero visual appeal. As Ramsay delved deeper into the components of the dish, more and more shortcomings came out of the woodwork. How'd you make that dough so quick? Um, it was a uh, prepared dough. But then, something even more crucial was unveiled. Is it an authentic Caesar dressing? pre -made. That's just asking for trouble. Well, moving on. In season 18's Winter Soup Challenge, Brett's choice to incorporate canned tomatoes into his crispy pancetta tomato soup went about as well as you'd expect. It actually left judges Tracy Desjardins and Gordon Ramsay himself visibly shocked. What kind of tomatoes did you use? Uh, canned uh, palato de pomodoro. The dish was torn apart for its excessive saltiness and the notable absence of any pancetta flavor. In the end, Brett garnered a mere three points. Now, while there is a general consensus that canned tomatoes have an edge over fresh ones, they can sometimes mess with the flavor profile of the dish, which is not something Michelin star restaurants would favor. Were they salted before you started? Um, I cooked them down with salt, Chef. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there tomato puree in there? Uh, a little bit of paste, Chef. Paste, Chef. I find it a little salty. Yeah, Ramsay's overt disgust for pre-made or frozen ingredients is well documented. But there's a bit of a thread for me to pull there, since back in 2009, there was a bit of a stir surrounding Gordon Ramsay's culinary empire. 
The Guardian reported that, in some of his high-profile restaurants and gastropubs in London, pre-prepared food was making its way into the kitchen, getting heated up, and then presented to diners with jaw-dropping markups that sometimes reached a staggering 586%. This revelation left many wondering if Ramsay's commitment to fresh, high-quality ingredients was truly as unwavering as he proclaimed. Take, for example, Foxtrot Oscar and Chelsea, West London. It was revealed that they were using a separate kitchen facility in Wandsworth, South London, to prepare various components of dishes. These components were then transported to the restaurant where they were heated and served to eager customers. When this practice came to light, Gordon Ramsay's spokesperson had to explain that this was indeed happening, albeit with an explanation. Well, this comes from the same man who was in an interview promoting the F word, who declared that using fresh ingredients was the only way to ensure a truly fantastic taste. He even questioned how anyone could overlook the value of fresh food, calling the use of pre-made or packaged food a crime. Now, the apparent contrast between his strong endorsement of fresh ingredients and the use of pre-prepared components in some of his own restaurants raises questions about Ramsay's consistency in upholding his culinary principles. But it's important to note that the use of pre-prepared components is not inherently wrong in the restaurant industry as it can streamline operations. And not every place has to try and be a three Michelin star restaurant. Though I also think it's important that people are at least trying to hold the big shots like Ramsey to practice what they preach. And I'm not the only one, since Chef John Quigley, who owns Glasgow's Red Onion, expressed his own concerns. Quigley believed that the stark contrast between Ramsey's public image and the reality of his restaurant operations was disappointing. Helen Hoken, the then editor for Food and Travel magazine, was less surprised by these revelations. She candidly noted that there appeared to be a growing divide between what Gordon Ramsay professed and what he practiced. Hoken's insights were particularly incisive, as she believed that Ramsay's actions were eroding the trust of his devoted fan base. She pointed out a fundamental issue. Ramsay's focus was shifting away from the very essence of his fame, the food itself. More recently, in 2023, he ventured into the world of ready-made foods available at grocery stores. His brand, known as Buy Chef Ramsay, has exclusively partnered with Walmart to offer a selection of eight convenient meals. These dishes are designed for quick and easy preparation, needing just a few minutes to heat and serve. These are the first of Ramsay's frozen food lineup, and yeah, it feels real weird saying these words together in the same sentence, but here we are. Now, at least he's keeping it close to his heart, since he's offering dishes that range from shepherd's pie to fish and chips. Additionally, he's got a four cheese lasagna, a macaroni bake, a mushroom risotto, a chicken pot pie, and the list goes on. By the way, have any of you tried any of them? Let me know if you have. Meanwhile, people have started questioning that Ramsay has begun to prioritize self-promotion over the authenticity and quality of the dishes that initially propelled him to stardom. And also, the reviews are glaringly bad. It is possible that Ramsay's stance on frozen and canned foods is not a one-size-fits-all condemnation. For example, take a look at this. You can buy haricot beans dried or canned. They are packed with protein and have a lovely soft texture. He made it clear that there are contexts where using canned ingredients like baked beans is perfectly acceptable, especially when preparing food at home. Home cooking has a different set of rules compared to professional restaurant kitchens, let alone high-profile places like some of Ramsay's restaurants. When you're cooking in the comfort of your own kitchen, convenience and practicality are usually much more important than extravagance. Ramsay's criticism of restaurants taking shortcuts is rooted in the idea of transparency and fair pricing. If a restaurant is charging patrons restaurant-level prices for dishes that are predominantly made with packaged ingredients, it's a bit unethical right? Anyway, speaking of banned ingredients, a few other ingredients that shouldn't make the plate are, well, the shit sack of a lobster, crab shells, and of course, human hair. Can you name any contestants who ended up using these exotic ingredients? Make sure to let me know if anyone in particular comes to mind. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And if you thought this video was crazy, don't forget to check out this next one right here.